Hi, thanks for joining me on this deep dive video into looking at the signals coming from a key fob and how our body interacts with them. Now, if you haven't seen the first video where we do the drive test and we look at some of the results, be sure to go check out the description in the link there to go ahead and watch that video. So let's get started. In this video, we're gonna go into a deeper dive discussion on our key fob analysis. We were talking about in the first video, whether or not if we held the key fob up against our chin or up against our chest, would it extend the range? And we saw that with mixed results that indeed it can extend the range. But in this video, we're gonna get into a little bit more of the why, what ends up happening with uh, the signals, the electromagnetic waves, and the key fob itself. So, one of the first things that we're gonna do, much like the other videos, we're gonna go ahead and try to just record and see that signal, just kind of validate that my flaky key fob is still doing what we would expect it to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run the program that I've got here. And this is just basically showing us a live view. When I hit the key fob, it's going to show the waterfall plot of all the bursts that are coming off of my key fob in general. And so you can see it's got about five bursts that if you saw the first video, you could kind of see a little bit of that information. So what's inside of this data, right? This is just energy, it's just electromagnetic waves that are out there, what's happening with it? So first off, we're gonna go ahead and look at the raw signal itself. And so what we're looking at here, let me go ahead and set these keys down for a second, sorry about that. We're gonna look at the power versus time of the signal. Now, these key fobs tend to use some of the most simplest modulation that's out there. So modulation, what is this? This is basically taking an electromagnetic wave, you know, just out in the ether, and it's changing some properties of it. And in this case, it's gonna be turning it on or off. So it's gonna be, there's gonna be a wave present, or there's no wave present. And on the screen, one of the things that you're seeing is basically a bunch of highs and lows that are directly corresponding to the information associated with uh, more my key fob. And now there's a contract that exists between my key fob and my car, right? When it was produced and manufactured, and those two things were associated and paired together. So there is some common information. They know what frequency they're supposed to transmit at. They know what, uh, you know, data rate, how fast these ones and zeros are supposed to be flying uh, along the way. And so one of the things in order to run this experiment that we did is we had to effectively demodulate or get those ones and zeros back out of it. Now, we're not going to go into all of the, uh, the signal processing that we put at it, and, but basically it was a pretty interesting process where uh, we looked at the signal itself, we found it in frequency, just like what we did a minute ago, and then what we had to do is actually look at each one of these ones and zeros that are going at a very steady rate. And then the next thing that we did in signal processing is we got the timing information out of that. And so as you can see here, it says the symbol rate, which is basically the rate of ones and zeros, or the bit rate, is about 2,000. So it's about 2,000 bits per second. And so now I know that I'm going to look at this power versus time, and I'm going to say every one two thousandth of a second, whatever that is, I think it's about 50, 500 microseconds or so, uh, I'm going to say, is my power high or is my power low? And basically, the answer to that question is going to give me a one or a zero. And it's going to give me a bunch of ones and zeros over and over and over again until I've got all the bits that were transmitted by my key fob. Now, once I have those, part of this experiment was twofold. One, I wanted to be able to experiment with a reflector. I wanted to be able to see what is the, a good shape to be able to, uh, to, to basically mimic, you know, basically your head. <laughs> uh, because basically what your skull is doing is uh, acting a bit of as, as a resonant cavity. So I wanted to see what happens when we move this reflector closer and further away and then the other one is pretty much, I needed to throw away my key fob because it wasn't a reliable source. So we're using the software defined radio, the NI uh, USRP 2901. It's capable of transmitting and receiving uh, RF signals from 70 megahertz up to six gigahertz. So 315 megahertz is well within its capabilities. And so once I got the bits back out, I pretty much just recreated that signal, but from a more reliable source so that when I run my program, you should hear the car horn honk. Now, one of the things that was necessary in order to determine the strength of the overall signal was uh, to, well, not only not using the key fob, but also I needed a constant um, wave to be sent out. And I needed something else to be able to pick up that signal. 
because as much as I enjoy having my car horn honk every time I hit the lock button, I'm sure it's starting to annoy my neighbors quite a bit. So instead what I did is across the room, uh, about two feet behind the camera actually, I've got another system back there. And it's a, more of a test instrumentation. It's not software-defined radio, uh, it's software-defined instrumentation capable of doing about the same frequency range but to a much higher quality. And I've got an antenna on that system and what it's doing is it's just picking up the signal and showing me the power versus time of what I'm transmitting here. And so what I'm about to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip my software around a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and actually transmit out a continuous tone and we're going to look at the power versus time of that signal as I get closer and further away from this antenna or I move the reflector kind of acting as a corollary to me holding up that key fob to my chest along the way. And you'll see the type of interaction that your body has with these electromagnetic waves uh, in a real significant way. So, on my system right now, I'm just looking at basically power versus time and a spectrum, but there's no power coming through. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to a different piece of software, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, really just transmit out a single tone. We're going to go ahead and have it always generate out a simple tone. So it's currently set up so that that USRP is going to, whenever it receives uh, some bits, it's basically going to modulate them with ASK, that's what we're seeing here. Uh, and then it's basically going to buffer it a little bit and then send it directly to the device. But if I don't send it a, any bits, it's just going to send out a tone instead. So let's go ahead and run that. And once that's running, indeed you'll see that now we have a little bit of a signal. Let's go ahead and get that there. Now we have a spectrum on our left hand side. And what we're looking at on the right hand side is the power versus time of that constant power signal that I'm transmitting right next to me. Now that signal is varying quite a bit and you can kind of see, uh, and that really is already my body interacting with the signal that's coming off of the antenna, which is actually made for a pretty difficult experiment because any little movement that I would do or anybody else that's around would possibly change the way that the signal was bouncing off. But one thing that we can tell for sure is that when I go ahead and I pull up that reflector into the system, you can see that that signal tends to get a lot stronger. Now, based on the geometry of this panel, that uh, has the ability to change. You can see it as I flatten it out, and as I make it a little bit more, uh, you know, kind of more like a, a, a dish, it's focusing that energy across the room at that antenna itself. Now, unlike the microwave radiation, this focused energy is at a different frequency, and it's not bothering with us. We're not getting hot except for the, from the Texas heat outside. Uh, but other than that, you can see, let me go ahead and set that back down, that uh, indeed that signal is varying quite a bit. Now if I, another experiment that we ran was basically if I just touch the antenna, you'll see that it significantly jumps up in power. That's just yet another proof that our bodies are physically interacting with these electromagnetic waves. Either we're extending the shape of the antenna or we're reflecting parts of the antenna like the reflector that I had there. But each one of these things falls into the bigger picture as to does our body have the ability to increase the power that is received by something a distance away. In this case, I've got uh, a PXI chassis across the room doing that receiving, and I'm just remoted into it in general. So one of the other questions was, is it possible for anybody with a software-defined radio to actually decode and receive your, basically your car's signal, your key fob signal, and open your car for you? Now, a few different things to note. Modern uh, car key fobs, use and employ a variety of different means to prevent this from happening. It's not that somebody can't get your keys information. In fact, anybody that's in the room here, uh, they could click their key fobs and we could probably see some of the information. Now, one of the things that ends up happening is that information is useless to me uh, unless it's the same thing every time. And modern key fobs tend to have something called a rolling code or they employ other tactics to either make it harder to receive the signal or to uh, pretty much impossible for the car to receive the same signal twice. And so that is just a big part of modern communications that they know that people have things like this available to them in a variety of different forms and they want to make sure that your cars are more secure than that. So rest easy in knowing that your car is very likely secure uh, you know, if you're using any modern uh, key system probably since the mid-1990s or later. Uh, in fact, I'm using just a 2005 Equinox and uh, although I can record the lock signal and my car will 
get the lock signal over and over again, and it will lock. That's how we're running this experiment. If I were to, and when I do record the unlock signal, it no longer works. So basically, it, it is a one-time only code that when I press that button, that's what you get. So it, there is basically even security on my older car uh, that we have here. And so last, there's this question of how does my key fob and my car know, well, do they know each other? And it, indeed, what ends up happening is uh, at the factory or at the time that your remote is programmed, there's a, a secret piece of information that's actually transmitted between both the key fob and the car. It's a bit of a secret key. But not only that, there, there's an identity that goes along with your key fob and your car. So although your car is receiving lots of signals, technically speaking, your car probably receives everybody's key fob. But it knows basically to ignore everybody else except yours uh, because it has established that basic trust relationship at some point in time, either at a dealership, after you purchased the car, or when the car was even manufactured. So thanks for joining me and learning a little bit more about the signals that your key fob generates and how it interacts with your body, and indeed if it can uh, extend the range of, uh, of the signal. Now, be sure to check out the description below for any information about the products or the software that we've used, and click on that subscribe button so that you know when the next video comes out. And also, while you're down there, I'd like it if you commented. Uh, any questions that you might have, I'd love to hear about what made you curious about this video. And we'll see you in the next NI at Home.